This is an introduction to the data and analytics cycle. Now this will obviously vary in different contexts, including access to data within an organization, the kinds of tools that you have available, and even just organizational processes. But this is roughly the types of things that you'll be aware of or that you'll be engaging in when you're working with educational data. So first of all, when we're dealing with educational data, you have a range of data source options. Now these sources are growing in quantity regularly as there's new approaches for data collection, as there are uh, different types of uh, integration opportunities between data sets, which means you can gain some level of additional insight when you bring in multiple data sets. But these sources can include anything from student information systems to, student LM or to the institution LMS data. It might also be used through some mining of social media. Uh, use of swipe cards within a university, within a school system. So there's a range of things where we use our basic data sources with. Now, I haven't seen a lot of systems that have done a great job with putting together an integrated repository which brings these different data sets together, and partly because it's not a very simple process to do. But the general idea is you have a range of data sets, and then you have a range of questions that you're asking of that data. Now, in some cases, you're looking at things such as how does being connected socially within a course impact student success? And are there ways that we can help foster better social connections if there's actually a relationship between social positioning in a network and the uh, performance of that student in an academic setting? It may also be around trying to identify or sensitizing models early on based on student profiles. So if a student comes from a particular type of a background, first in family in terms of degree completion, there's a possibility that that information can be helpful for a university in terms of tailoring resources that the student might need or at least in sensitizing the analysis work that they do so that certain behavior from a student who's deemed to be at risk due to a variety of factors uh, are addressed in advance and the behavior of that individual would be different from a student that's perhaps not deemed to be at risk. So try that again, they could both be exhibiting similar behavior, but the system would treat them differently in terms of how they're assessing or evaluating that student. Now this comes out in two perspectives and there's academic analytics, which is really using data and analytics to improve organizational performance. There's learning analytics, which we're obviously focused on in this course, where we're targeting what the student is actually doing, what the faculty is doing, and ways to improve both the teaching and the learning aspect of it. So the, the analytics model that we're looking at looks something like this. As I mentioned, it can change for uh, a variety of contexts and a variety of reasons. So I'll go through each of these elements individual, fairly, uh, individually fairly quickly. So the first part obviously involves getting a hold of the data. And this can come from a range of uh, options, both institutional or ex, uh, outside of the institutional. So, uh, there may be factors such as you're looking at uh, getting data to, for, for the organization to improve its uh, marketing or promotion to a particular type of student or student profile. Or it may be you're trying to build a particular model of of uh, pedagogy or assess a pedagogical model based on certain attributes of that student or based on certain practices of the educator. So once you've really sort of defined or looked at what is it that we're trying to do with this particular analytics activity, then you can define how you get a hold of and how you make sense of the data that you're collecting. From there, there can be questions that relate to storage. In many cases, the data is automatically going to be stored with the native application that we're going to use to do analytics work with, meaning that the storage of LMS data isn't an issue that you necessarily need to look at, it's getting a hold of that data that's more consequential. On the other hand, if you're going to use some data that is being generated through social media or that is being generated through other organizational data collection practices, then issues of storage and security of storage and moving it out of that initial database into a data format and a database that you can use for an analysis work is an important consideration. In some instances, you're going to have reasonably clean data or data at least that's in an analytics friendly state. And that's typically if you have, as mentioned already, LMS data, which is institutionally configured against certain variables. Often that's related at some level at least to student information system data. So that's in a reasonably good shape. On the other hand, if you have data that comes from social media or that comes from a variety of different systems that aren't necessarily connected meaningfully, then you likely do have to go through a process of uh, both cleaning and then ultimately integrating uh, those data sets. 
From there, it's the type of analysis work that you're doing. Now, obviously, this is a question actually that's decided early on. It's not your net, you don't start thinking about analysis at the point of having all of your data together. Uh, quite often, you're going to be looking at specific questions and the process of collection and acquisition of data is going to be related to the types of questions that you're asking institutionally or that you're asking at a particular class level whether that's a specific analytics technique or whether you have broader goals as a system in terms of being able to uh, get a sense of which students are at risk of dropping out or what are the best course sequences that a student should take through a program that produces the greatest possibility for success. Now as mentioned in the previous video there are important considerations to be dealt with around how you present that data. It certainly isn't sufficient to just take a, a the analytics output of work that you've been doing and just present it to someone in a CSV or in a similar format. You need to present a visualization that ideally is interactive, which means that the individual that is viewing the data or working with the data has the ability to change variables or to begin to look at, well, what happens if we change this here or ask specific questions of that data. That's why the tool we're using in week two is uh, Tableau enables a good explanation or a good overview of what that process is and how that uh, actually works. And then finally, which we aren't going to look at in this course, but it's something to be aware of, once you've gone through this experience or this, this entire cycle of uh, collecting your data and, and cleaning it and analyzing it and representing it to learners, faculty, teachers, or administrators, it's about what do you do now. And that's not something that we're looking at in this course, but that's an important consideration that uh, should feed into the subsequent process of additional data collection.